एक देश भाषा अनेक एंड भाषिनी बाय इट सेल्फ अमिताभ इज अ नेम दैट इवोक्स सो मच बिफोर आई गेट इनटू सम नट्स एंड बोल्ट क्वेश्चंस व्हाट डज द वर्ड भाषिनी सीक टू कन्वे इट्स भाषा इंटरफेस फॉर इंडिया दैट्स व्हाट भाषिनी स्टैंड्स फॉर एंड इट यू नो has embarked on a journey of translating one language to other fundamentally we take five problems which is at the core one is that the digital systems or computers should be able to understand what you speak and that too on 22 languages the second problem statement which we handle is if a computer has got text encoded in one language it should be in a position to translate into another language that again 22 languages and we take 22 languages because it's defined in eighth schedule of constitution although india has uh, more than 100 languages which are spoken by 100000 or more people and there are dialects which are much more than that but the first at the first step we are tackling this particular problem then we are third problem which we are tackling is Uh, if it is encoded in one language in the computer computer should be able to speak out that so it is text to speech and then we are having lot of text printed text which has to be actually you know understood by the computer currently when we scan it it comes out as pixels or picture we want to convert it into text and then the fifth problem is all about creating uh, digital vocabulary for the country because there are a lot of names lot of things which are not there in the digital vocabulary it may be there in the paper vocabulary but it is not there in digital vocabulary so that's what we are working upon so five basic problems automatic speech recognition text to text conversion text to speech optical character recognition and named entity recognition it is five problems in 22 languages is what we are looking at he has made it sound quite easy but uh, the task uh, must be monumental and gigantic considering uh, the fact that he just told us amitabh just told us that uh, 22 languages uh, which are spoken at more than 100000 people but that's the base uh, the number of actual speakers is in uh, hundreds of millions uh, in some instances uh, since we are at a ai conference uh and the fact that there is a national language translation mission i want to ask you what role uh does ai play in this monumental task yes so uh you know these entire five set of problems have been achieved through ai models we have created about 300 plus ai models which are open sourced uh, in the market and these translation models are available as a service by us on our platform which has been created through apis so this is uh, the base technology remains as ai uh, i talked about the five problems which we are there and one is of course this entire thing is based on digital data so when we started embarking on this journey there was uh, six to seven languages has lot of digital data but others did not have so we went on a mission which was basically first of its kind and Uh, the world to create the digital data and that was about taking a picture on a mobile having an app around it and uh, going to various people and asking them to speak about a monument a food or something like that and then we used to transcribe it we had about 200 plus people identified and employed for this particular job so we created digital data to train the models where the digital data did not exist for example sindhi or nepali there was a lot of very little digital data which was existing there uh, what sort of infrastructure uh, ai infrastructure do you use because in previous sessions we have been talking about that what can you share with our audience see we use uh, gpus uh, of course to train the models as well as to deliver this uh, models and uh, uh, at the peak instance when we are looking at today our system actually delivers Uh, about uh, 6 million inferences a day that means uh, somebody is, is sending a content 6 million times in a day and which is a pretty large system we approximately look at approximately about 150 gpu scaling up to 300 to 500 depending upon the load and the time it comes across as far as concurrency is concerned and we also train the models using gpus so some of this is available and being used by us so you know 
uh, yes, there is an infrastructure which is required to deliver this kind of a nationwide thing. And we approximately have today 300 customers uh, who are using these five services across various domains. Uh, since you were uh, here during previous sessions when we spoke about uh, small, medium, large uh, language models and what kind of model will work for India, where do you yourself from your experience here at Bashni uh, stand on this debate? Uh, see, uh, when we are looking at the models, uh, what type of models it will be using or we will be looking at, we have to define the use case for which we are using it. So let me dwell upon few use cases which you Absolutely. know will, which we have deployed at scale, right? So uh, and uh, means and those are basically a technology is useful and will be used as for the use cases only if it is for the benefit of the people and the first beneficiary of the people is the last mile in this country. So in this country we have four types of divides, you know, which were prevalent. One was financial divide, which we took away from Jandhan mobile thing and there is a lot of financial inclusion activity which has happened. We also have a digital divide where people are not digitally savvy and they are not, you know, using computers, maybe because of the keyboard fear. Smartphones have taken away a lot of that because it is, it's more visual. Then we have a literacy divide which is basically that people are only able to use voice to actually communicate. Reading and writing is not possible. Uh, and the fo uh, fourth one is language divide. So what we had embarked upon is to, you know, see how much Bhashini can play upon this particular area to remove these divides which are there. So we created a system with, uh, uh, you know, Reserve Bank of India Innovation Hub, which actually is giving a frictionless credit system for farmers and that frictionless credit system for farmers is dependent on the land records but that is used as a collateral for giving loans. Banks understand only English so what used to happen was that the farmer is supposed to translate the land record which is in vernacular language, spend about two to three months finding a translator and then paying him something to translate and then going to the bank record not effectively understanding what has been translated. So this frictionless credit platform actually integrates with Bashni APIs and the land records is translated in online fashion. So theoretically now you can provide a loan in a day's time if the documents are correct and if the entire thing is working out. And you know approximately uh, 10 plus crore loans are provided every year. So, so is this already deployed? And this is already deployed and working, right? The second use case which I will talk about is that uh, we imagined a persona and here when we are trying to do this as a use case, persona imagination is very important. We imagine a persona who comes from a village, earns say 100 rupees during the day and he wants to transfer that 100 rupees to his mother. Uh, we only had the condition which we had talked about is that means he may not be knowing how to operate a smartphone. So he is supposed to dial a number which we give him. He will go through his entire user's journey of transfer of money using voice. He only has to enter the PIN and the money would be transferred. This is something which is again deployed at scale in Hindi, English and uh, Telugu right now. We are coming up with other languages so that it is ubiquitous and everybody from the last mile is able to do that. Uh, Prime Minister uh, transfers 2,000 rupees every four months to the farmers and there are 12 crore farmers. If there is a challenge with the farmer uh, of not receiving the money, he earlier used to go across to various departments to figure that out. Mm. Now we have created a chatbot which actually he can ask Mera Gukta Nahi Hua and after authentication the answer will be given to him that you go to a bank and do this otherwise this was basically a two weeks task for him. And, and is this chatbot in multiple languages? It's in 12 languages right now, we are moving into 22 languages. Uh, this is again on production scale, this is approximately accessed during the day 30,000 times. Wow. And the main question which is being asked is, uh, you know, uh, Agla Kisht Kab Aayega? <laughs> so, you know, that is the uh, thing which is there. So, you know, it's a, it's a system and that determines what are the sentiments which we are working upon there. 
then we talked about uh, you know uh, investigation officer uh, in a police station he goes to a crime scene generally he writes down noting about what is happening there he forgets half thing half the things he sees uh, he may not be able to remember uh, we have provided them with a the app now and they continuously speak what they see and it gets recorded sync into the back end system error corrected and the report is filed within 2 days which used to take about 2 months uh, piloted around 700 police stations today and we see this going further in this then we come to uh, judiciary uh, case registers in the local courts are in local languages high court works in english supreme court works in english uh, the entire case diary had to be translated when it had to move to higher echelons of the a court system so we have now you know we have done a poc and this will soon get implemented to translate everything across the system uh panchayats used to work had a system called e gram swaraj uh, which is basically uh, bookkeeping for the panchayat records this was in english till now till we actually translated uh, you know provided them the apis now it is in all 22 languages the local panchayats can actually work in tamil than what was working earlier one use case which we recently lost on international disabilities day uh, we used vashini to convert the railway manuals in audio form so the books can now be read out for the people who are visually disabled and they can actually you know uh, know how the railway manuals working the other thing which we are working upon which again is a work in progress is the maps of india were in few languages absolutely today uh, the project has been taken up while pin code wise uh, you know uh, kakinada is spoken it is then transliterated into 22 languages and the maps will now be available in 22 languages One so these are the use that, cases sir. which we are going across and many of these are online and working out so Amitabh. the now coming back to the question which you talked about whether slm or llm or what is required here it's the use case which determines what should be used in some cases like uh, you know chatbot we do use the uh, architecture which might use a llm at the back end or a sql query hmm. but the architecture actually is determined by the use case so that's a very important point uh, you know as we wind down our conversation i want to go back to the larger question and this was uh, the statement that sandeep patel also made and i saw you nod at that time that india has the potential to lead in ai do you agree with that and uh, if you do why see uh, i think when it comes to using technology at scale to actually deliver governance service and benefits to the people as well as doing transactions india has been leading for a very long time uh, you uh, look at the revolution which we brought in on passport issuance uh, you would have gone through earlier passport issuance system and new one company affairs earlier you know uh, system and the new one e filing income tax filing we never you know we one of the reasons why you we people do never used to file income tax was you know how do you go about then came aadhar right then came the financial inclusion then came upi in covid we beat the world by not only making the vaccine but you know actually administering vaccine across the entire setup so the and this language initiative i'll tell you as far as bhashni is concerned there are a lot of language initiatives in uh, in the country around the world who wants to come in but it was bhashni in 2021 when it was announced that we will cover 22 languages others started saying okay i will cover 100 languages in the country good <laughs> let's do 22 first people say that ai is not accurate but we go around to say we do financial transactions on ai hmm. so we are accurate and we will continue to be accurate there is lot of work to be done i am not saying that works not to be done then we were first one to say voice first tell me how many people will say voice first and do the voice first transactions we trans translate honorable prime minister speech on speech to speech basis all the panchayat sammelans today which happen 
for Ministry of Panchayat is translated into eight languages like. Okay, so we do that. Then we also took, have taken up the job of saying that it is not enough to do this video translation, document translation, and website translation as those are low-hanging fruits, no doubt about it. But we are getting into transactions to make them ubiquitous because we don't want a book to be read in your own language when it comes to filling up a scholarship form, you go to again English. That's not all about it. And most importantly, we are make, keeping it affordable. Right. That's, that's very important. Um, uh, our time is up, but 30 seconds on this point because you spoke about language and, you know, uh, even today uh, when one travels across the country, there are areas where you get stuck. And I'm not even talking about language chauvinism. I wonder if in the near future we will never have these debates, disputes around language because it's probably just standing next to each other and talking through a cell phone that might solve the problem. Yeah, you have a Bhashini app, if you download, there is a converse feature, which in some form tries to simulate what you're talking about. You can speak in other lang one language and the other person can speak in other language. We will try to enhance it and bring it to an extent that, uh, you know, what language I speak and what language you speak does not matter at all. And the system will start translating provided you have a gadget or a device. So that's something uh, in the voice form we will do. We are looking at how do we look at multilingual classrooms. We are releasing soon the feature of uh, speaker diarization and speaker identification, so multilingual video conferencing should be possible. Uh, we have built up glossary, so we are imbibing all the words which are available in the Indian domain to get into the system. So there is a work in progress, and uh, we hope that uh, we will be trying to reach the places where we are. Uh, but we will take it use case by use case. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, a round of applause for Amitabh and his team because remember this is not just uh, s something uh, that uh, look at the scale of uh, what is being done here. Uh, throughout his uh, uh, answers, I, w I kept uh, asking myself, should I ask him about whether uh, this compares with what Europe is and then I said no that's not the right question because our language uh, challenges if I may put it that way are far far greater in scale. Have, have any other countries um, approached you as someone said you know for example the Aadhaar model or our uh, UPI model has been exported people keep asking us questions has that also happened here? Yeah, yeah that has happened and we are uh, you know uh, we, we of course have a uh, lot of things to be solved here so but yeah there has been uh, countries who have asked us for help in their activity also if you google around at a uh, lot of places you know whenever satya comes to india he speaks about this project at multiple number of times so you know uh, if you actually google around you will find that there are his versions which are there in this world okay um we i think uh are now completely out of time because Ayush has come uh, with his uh, notepad. Uh, uh, Amitabh, I thank you for your time here because not only have you come on stage here but you've done it after listening to so many other people uh, and sharing uh, these nuggets of wisdom. The Bhashni project is actually a project that will have a multiplier effect on India, its economy and its people and society and uh, once again I wish you and your colleagues and team members all the very best in what you're doing. Thank you. Thank With you that, for having me. With that, it's a wrap on this session. I show it to you.